Everybody start clapping right now. We got a, we got a real one. Jamaica Finley, what it is, boy? I, I, man, I live in a dream, man. Hey, man. I'm living a dream. Hey, you looking like a dream. Man. Look, look, you see, Jack need to see these kicks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exclusive. I, I look good, get paid good. Hey, man, man. <laughs> but, man, we got to do it like this, man. For everybody that ain't knowing Dev Dumb, Stupid Living Up Under a Rock, man. Tell them where you're from. I'm Jermichael Finley. I'm from Dabal, Texas, um, East Texas. Uh, played for the Packers for a couple years. First, let's go back. Texas Longhorn, first of all. Hey, we here. Hey, we here. Hey, I got my guy over here. He's the OU fan, but hey, we here. But no, uh, uh, man, thank you guys for having me here, man. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, hey, what was the greatest Texas Longhorn game you've seen? Uh, seen? Oh, man, I got to go back to the National Championship game. Okay, with with uh, Vince Young, USC. <laughs> Hey, hard. That was, yeah, that was hey, everything. Uh, and, and it's still the iconic game. Uh, it's, 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 it's the best game uh, uh, played um, in, in college football. Uh, and, and my, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Man, before we go all the way in there, man, just give us a little brief synopsis of, you know, what was it like growing up in East Texas? Uh, it was different, man, uh, especially in the realm of life that I, that I had grown to be in, um, that my profession was in. Playing football in East Texas was different. My opinion, once again, that's what football was invented. Uh, if you go back and look and look at all the players that came through East Texas, you got, you got AP, you got uh, Reggie McNeil, uh, myself, um, you got um, the O line there at Washington, 71, uh, Big Boy. Uh, man, what's Big Boy? Love from Longview, Texas. Hey, uh, he's getting paid off now, but you got that guy. But once again, that's what football has invented. And uh, so if you look through the National Football League, you see East Texas all around that thing. How, I mean, when you, was, when you was growing up, right, in East Texas, at what point did you realize, man, I'm better than everybody? Like, I'm just way better than everybody. I, you, you get to a point where you, you see kids, uh, especially in the realm of life I grew up, I grew up in a, uh, in a rough part of town. Uh, you've seen kids getting in trouble, going to jail, doing this, but had the same caliber of, of uh, athleticism you had. Uh, they, they were, they could throw the ball, they can run, they could do all the things you did, but at the end of the day, they didn't have the, the mindset to make it out the, the ghetto. And, um, and that's, what, that's one thing that I had um, that, that went against me in a good way was um, I had the mindset, I had the, the supporting, I had the, you know what I mean, uh, the, the home set to, to make it out the hood. And uh, that, that's, what, that's what beat the odds, was me being very disciplined. Hard thing, especially when you're younger, you know, and you're talented in sports. You see all these absolutely that and obstacles that come across young talented brothers. What made you keep that focus and that uh, discipline? Uh, seriously, on a real note, is is my grandmother. She was very, she was an East Texas lady, uh, very Southern, uh, born in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. So she was about a book, you know what I mean. So uh, when the street lights came uh, went off, I'm at the crib. When the street lights came on, you know what I mean. We out. We are doing our thing, but <clears throat> I think it was my grandmother that that held me tight, that kept me to, you know, I mean, being a very, very structured kid. So for the fans that's around the world, they may not know, uh, can you explain to them how important football is in, is in Texas? And yes. also, like, the celebrity status that football Texas high school players get wow. around yeah. the town. I, I'm, I'm dealing with it as, as we speak. I got a 15-year-old um, now, Caden uh, Finley. Uh, dealing with it now, and we we're in Omega, a football in Alito, Texas, where these kids have won 12 state titles and uh, 12 state titles uh, out of out of the last what 14 years or whatnot, and, and you get you get to a point where it's, it's a sense of entitlement uh, with these kids now because the All American tags getting uh, French uh, put on kid here. You got these kid over here done won 10 state uh, a coach done won 10, 10, 10 state titles, and and it, it's just a it's a crazy dynamic because you, the kids never really make it past that level because they, you know what I mean, they get so, they, they, yeah, yeah, they get they so caught up in, happens. yeah, life happens. And uh, I mean, uh, my kid has a plus with that because he has me at the crib, uh, you know what I mean, detailing him up and, and telling him what's right and wrong in this world right now. So yeah. now we, we had uh, Zeke Elliott's dad come on the platform, right? And one thing he, he pointed out was that dads kind of get the short end of the stick when it comes to, you know, 
the kid makes it and he shouts out the mom. <laughs> he never really shouts out the dad, or they'll use the dad. Oh, you man. know, like the fight against the dad. <laughs> what, what do you feel about that? Do you do you see? Did you see a lot of um, dads growing up? You know what I mean? Wow, uh, I, I didn't. Uh, on the real, uh, I, I was raised without a father. Um, uh, my mom, my mom was there, but was more like. We was more like sisters, brothers. We had that dynamic where, you know what I mean? Hey, you, you want to do something, you come to my house and do it. Yeah. And close the door, you feel me? But other than that, man, you got to have that dynamic with your kid where he can come tell you anything. You know what I mean? It, it can't be a closed book where um, if, he's, if he's over here doing this, he, he come to Pops and Pops criticizing about this. Now you get into a, a state of mind where the kid go, he's hiding stuff from me now. Or, or if you're out showing your ass or whatnot, and your kid is the best kid in the National Football League, you can't, you can't do certain things because the eye in the sky don't lie. Amen. Now, you're not, you're a young man and you have a 15 year old son. I mean, your lifestyle can't be too much different. Right. You know, how do you keep him grounded? How do you keep him from losing his head? Like, what are some of the things you tell him so he doesn't lose his way inside of the, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it's tough, it's tough, man. Uh, uh, we, like, like we just went to a camp, what, two or three days ago, um, All-American camp down in um, San Antonio, and you get this label, um, and once you get this label of All-American, it sticks with you through high school, college, and when you get to the professional league, just uh, All-American here, you was All-American in college, so you, you got you to gotta be able you know, to talk to your kid, to, you know what I mean, dad's here. Uh, I love you regardless with this football, with $90 million, with $100 million or not. It pops here, and uh, that's that. Your kids got to feel that though. It just can't be a persona. It can't be put on in front of certain people. It's got to be backstage love, and and that's what kids want now. They wanna they wanna feel love, and um, I mean some sense of care. That's facts. That's facts. And for you yourself, um, when it came to aspirations to get in the NFL, when does that start? That starting like when you're playing Pee Wee uh, high school? Does it start in college? Like yeah, uh, no, nah, it, it started. No, nah, it started long ago. Uh, my my game was basketball, really, and, and, and yeah, yeah, and and, and uh, it was me and my grandmother at the time. I told her grandmother, I'm going, I'm going to lead in something. You know what I mean, because something, because we, we where I'm from, it ain't. You know what I mean, it's, it's certain kids that that want the pigskin and want like the the life, and some kids that need it. I was that kid over here that that needed that life. You know what I mean, to to help my my family get out of the situation that I was in and. And, um, and and that's what I deal with now. I got a, I got a kid that's one, he, like I said. He walks in. He's he's got it made. And um, I just try to keep that sense of hunger in him. Yeah. And uh, that that's all I need. Now I got to ask uh, on the road to college, right? Um, was Texas like the first people that recruited you? Was that the the, the college you wanted to go to at the time? Uh, uh, at the time, at the time, not. I was uh, once again. My grandmother, she she really didn't like the contact and and, and the game of football. Uh, she saw the game way down the road. And I, I was the player that was like, I want to play, I want to play. But she was like, Nah, boy, I'm gonna take care of you. Right. I'm gonna take care of you. And uh, next thing I know, I have Lou Dotson sitting in my in my living room, um, and in, in the projects in a what, to a 15 square foot crib. Right. I mean, I got Lou Dotson six six, uh, uh, sitting in the living room. I'm like, Man, the uh, University of Arizona at the time. And uh, he was like, we're going to offer you a full ride to the University of Arizona. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> it was no question. I, I was in it to win it. And uh, we, did, we did that. And uh, a few, a few uh, what, years down the road, I got I offered that sophomore year. Mac Brown came to 11th hour of my, of my high school career. He was like, here at the University of Texas, we want to offer you a scholarship. So I'm like, shit. I'm at the crib. I get to stay at home. Uh, my grandmother gets to touch me often, you know what I mean? And uh, it was very, it was very, um, it was, yeah, it was a spot to be at the time, Texas was. So, uh, Mac Brown offered me that scholarship to play football. Yeah. It, it was a no-brainer. I, I, I took that, I took that all day. I feel like kids that grew up with their grandma, I never had a grandmother, but I feel like kids that grow up with their granny get real wisdom in game. What is, what is something that stuck with you that she gave you? <laughs> she said, she said a lot of things that stuck with me. And, and that's one thing, because she she's a praying grandma, you know what I mean? She's, oh, She's she's in touch with a different with, with a different realm of life, and she just told me just to stay real to yourself, and uh, that's what I always kept, and uh, take care of your people, and uh, and, and that and that's me today, and uh, like I said, my grandmother, she, she's the she's the rock she's the rock in my life as we speak, and uh, she still gives me knowledge today. 
go through it uh, as far as the college uh, situation. Uh, you know, players normally got paid nothing to go to college. Yeah. Likenesses, you know, NCAA, you know, with the video games go out there, but players never got paid. And they're um, what they call incentives to go to certain schools. Right, right. They'll try to do it under the table. Did they ever try to throw it at the game? <laughs> Look at this guy. Hey, we're going to go there. We're going to go there. Did they ever, like, oh, did a carver pull up this unknown, nigga, clean uh, title? Like, hey, we... I, uh, no, at the at the time it was it was so because um, Reggie Bush had just got popped for his situation, yeah, we um, we and so at the time it was very very tight, um, and it was very detailed in everything they did as far as agency, and, yeah. and, and, and so it was a way to do it. But at the time, man, I, <laughs> what, what were some of the ways? <laughs> we can talk about it now. Oh man, no, nah, hey, the first the first uh, agency I went with was. Um, it was Vince Young's agency. He had started the agency. It's called Next Level, um, and he that was right after he won a national title. Yeah, <laughs> hey, and, and and things and things start getting discombobulated and whatnot, uh, especially coming out with the guy that you know what I mean. He hit he hit an iconic level instantly, uh, overnight. So starting the agency firm really was it really wasn't the you know what I mean the the style I was looking for. Because of, you know what I mean? Once you get into the agency, now you're in the game. You're a grown man. Yeah. They're sending you out to the wolves. Now you got to take care of your business. And it's it just, I, I was probably one of the youngest guys coming in the National Football League at the time. So I was still trying to, you know what I mean, grab my feet and uh, you know, gather myself. Uh, but at the time, yeah, there you go. It, it wasn't good. And how do you feel about the college players now able to, like, make money off their likeness now? I think I think it's a good thing. Good, it's good and bad, uh, especially dealing with the young athlete that I deal with, uh, because you show kids uh, first of all, you get money real early, yeah. and, and and you have a long career. Then kids start losing that hunger, and that and that aspiration of playing, yeah. playing the game. And if you give me at the time, you gave me three or four million dollars, I'm like I'm like Roger Goodell. I'm done. <laughs> I, I don't I don't want no more. And so I think I think they they lose that they lose that hunger. Who are some players right now that you feel like in the NFL have lost their hunger? No, I don't know. I, no, you, you, you can sit all around the lead, though. Guy, guys lose it. If you get paid uh, here and there, I want to check here. You, some guys, though, but if you came from that, that the land and, and the place of uh, where, I mean, this is all I got, yeah. you, continue to, you continue to have that hunger and that that uh that drive to keep going. We're gonna get to the NFL part of it, but I gotta ask you, uh, you seen the movie He Got Game, right? I, I I'm not a movie guy, bro. But so you never seen He Got ever he Never. Got okay. Never. So in this movie, uh Jesus Shuttleworth's son goes off to a college and uh they persuade him by sending females to his <laughs> school. Right? You're funny. How often do does that happen to college? That's so that's so funny. There, You're a funny dude. Women just uh, uh, I think I think in a, in, in, um, I think not in college, but when you get to that level where um, the finances come in place and um, you're performing and you're doing something here and there, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, you you you, 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 you yeah. So yeah. Got, yeah. Things ask, happen. Now we got to ask you since you're here, bro. What is your definition of a ten? Definition of a ten? Yeah, a female that's a ten. Oh wow, I like that. That's a good question. Uh, um, it, it's it's where everybody in your group or in your family can get together and be one. If, 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 if everybody, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If, if 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 everybody if everybody around and uh, clicking on the same note, that's what you call a team. And, and it's no it's no uh, a ten. A, a ten. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought he said a team. No, I fuck with that answer too, though. Go ahead and finish that up. Now we go, and then we're going to get to the bullshit. Oh, uh, a 10 and like a female? Yeah, female. Oh, uh, you're, you're, you're really good. Oh, <laughs> uh, I like it. Oh, uh, that's even better. Um, a 10 in my book, yes. it, it's got to be from head to toe. So let me ask you this. If, like, the face ain't all that, but the body, fool. Like, we, we can't, we can't take but what's it. what's the rating? Uh, the rating, but no, yeah, you, you get, yeah, but, yeah, butter face, I can't take it. But if you got a pretty face, big booty, yeah. nah, I want the whole thing. What's the whole thing? The, the face, the, uh, the ass, the titties, everything. feet. Oh, feet, feet. Yeah, feet gotta be all right, so if everything right but the feet, what she get, nine, nine and a half? Damn, I'm, I'm, I'm detailed as hell, too. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah she brought, she'll get by for the night, though. Let me, let me see get, if there's a particular eye, because 
I like if a female needs a fit on her nails, that bothers me. Like, yeah, that bothers me too. Cause if, if I see it, you damn sure see it. Right. Uh, I uh, shouldn't even notice, but I noticed. <laughs> so you know, I know you. Know. <laughs> so does any other categories count? Cause we were having a conversation like, if, can she cook? Is she is she nice? Does she, what's how does she treat a man? Like, does that does that I, matter I, to? Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you got, yeah, you got to be able to you got to be able to cook. You got to do the whole thing: cook, clean. Even though I probably have a maid, but you got to be able to like pick up some shit a little bit. That's that's a tad bit. That's a look. Yeah, we might have a maid, but you got to be able to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now, at, at least. Now, <laughs> let's say now. Here's one question. This is always a debate. Now let's say she is a ten and she has all those qualities that you need. Does her finances matter to you? Yeah, it, it, yes, it does. At, at this point in my life, yeah, I, I don't need you, but you gotta meet me 50-50. Yeah, you know, you gotta do, you gotta do something that really intrigues me and catch my eye, or, or pull up in something. Yeah, yeah. Can't, yeah. You can't, yeah. Go up. Can't be pulling up in a Hyundai or nothing or shit like that. When, when's the last time a woman took you out on a date? Wow, that's pretty good. Last time, uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. See, that's my thing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man. You know what I mean? I, I step up, and uh, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm the guy that really flipped the bill all the time. So, I don't really need all that. So you don't even try to test them? Nah, don't no. It ain't no testing here. Oh, he just. Stay with the All right, all right. So, sorry, keys and uh, all gas, no brakes. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's real. All right, so. Um, Let's do it like this, cause you know uh, we do want to get as far as um, your, your time in the uh, in college was you know, spectacular. I believe you what you did two years in college. Or, uh, yeah, I done. So I done two years in college. Um, I was a redshirt uh, sophomore. Yeah. I played two on the field and redshirted one year. There you go. And uh, NFL became like just you know honestly the numbers you were putting up. It's like you had to uh, you know it, you you was gonna go that way. So tell us about that. Take us through like draft day. Uh, take us through like um, just even getting picked. Uh, to go to the NFL for your mama, you know, cause yeah, yeah. you know how does how does mama take you? Like, I, like, like, do you just go buy a Bentley off top? Do you like what? What do you do? Like, once you know, like, hey, I'm in the NFL now. We about to go. Absolutely. Uh, at, at the time, um, we I, I went to the East Texas um, on draft day. I was drafted in the third round. The NFL is all about who you know. You know what I mean, in the time you got to know someone. You know what I mean, it ain't just like get drafted. Your age, somebody in your circle has to know someone to get to get in that circle in the NFL because it's very tight. So uh, at the time, um, I didn't know I was going to get drafted. It was just one guy that my agent knew at the time um, in Houston, Texas, uh, Lorenzo Highsmith. He played for Miami with the bad boys. Uh, and we, we, knew, we knew him. And at the time, we hit him up. We was like, we got, this, we got this kid, Texas, from East Texas, too. Went to the University of Texas. And he's a dog. Uh, uh, you need to check him out. And so we sent film out to him. Um, at the time, I, they had me undrafted all the way. It was like from first round undrafted, bro. They opened, they opened me up all the way. Right. And, um, and uh, I, was, I was just confused. I'm like, man, when am I going to get drafted here? Next thing I know, uh, my name popped up. Uh, well, we got uh, Ted Thompson hit me up and Mike McCarthy at the time here, Cowboys coach. Yeah, he hit me up and it was like, uh, we drafted you to Green Bay. I was like, oh, shit. I said, I need, I need all the Nintendo games I need going to Green Bay. Cause it ain't shit there, and so uh, I, I get I get there, land. Um, it's snowing. It's probably negative twelve at the time. Wind, windshield negative twelve. I'm like I'm, I said the same thing. I'm like, damn, I got I got to go catch a ball from Aaron Rodgers in negative twelve weather. The way he throw the ball, and uh, at the time um, I didn't think it was gonna be a blessing. Then uh, I got drafted there. Probably was the best decision of my life. You ever see that it was an NFL film where there was this black player? He was like, "Man, it's cold as hell." Like he just kept saying, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." <laughs> like, it, it was that feeling. How, yeah, because you're from Texas, so we, you know, we ain't used to that. Yeah, absolutely. Time. So how did you adjust to that? Like, uh, they always say home field advantage and Lambeau field advantage and the frozen tundra. At, but we, 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 it's even playing field because uh, as the other team coming out, the visual squad coming out, I'm cold too. But you just got to play that persona and play that part. I mean, you've been here for four years. You should be used to this cold. And at the time, I don't know, I can't tell now, but uh, McCarthy, he don't like guys playing with um, sleeves. Our offensive guys got to play no sleeves on. And uh, we went to Chicago 
I can go back and went to Chicago. It was negative 25 windshield. I'm like, shit, I went in for halftime. I went in for halftime and thawed out. I'm like, we got to go back out here. At the, at the time, they, they paying you that they pay, they paying you that cheese, so you gotta make a business decision then. When is when is that called? Does that bring a different type of game out of you? Uh, it's different. Uh, at the time, uh, you got you got twelve you got twelve throwing the ball at uh, the same velocity as in if we're in Miami in yeah. eighty degree, ninety degree weather. So I didn't change my hands up thirty times before the ball got here, and and it's just one of those things you gotta you gotta adapt to, especially at the time I was the highest paid tight end. So you better catch the damn ball. So it's, it's just it's just something you got to do. Did they ever mic you up like during the game? I I got mic'd up a couple of times. Like, did they use your audio or were you like too just guys? Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a certain guy we want on this mic. <laughs> yeah, not this ain't, ain't this guy. <laughs> so honestly, what does a twenty something year old do with that much money? Man, at, at the time, man. Hey, and then next flash is across the ticker. Then your family hit you up. The women hit you. Like, how does how do you deal with that? Uh, it? It's just it's just some. At the time, I was married, so yeah, I dealt dealt with it pretty good. Uh, but um, it, it's just one of those things that you you have to listen to all the seminars, the people they got coming in, the the former players that they have coming in, the rookie symposium that they that they help you with, um, and you just really have to take take that all in and um, seize the moment at the time. And I think some guys go into them symposium and uh, and, uh, and, um, and the seminars and, and take it for granted. And um, and them, them other guys at, at the end of the day, at the 11th hour, are sick um, with no money, um, uh, bankrupt, and uh, yeah, have nothing. So yeah, I was one of those guys taking notes. Is it easy to come out the NFL with nothing? With nothing? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know, because that wasn't me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what would you, can you say your first frivolous purchase was like you just wanted this because you wanted it? Uh, but yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't for me. Um, at the time, I was very content. I just I, I had got my license at 18 years old, bro. Okay. 18 going on 19. Um, so a car wasn't in uh, my best interest because I just started driving on the highway. Um, but helping my grandmother out with all what all her um, you know, things that she helped me through high school with. Uh, the J.C. Penney bills and the the bells and the Foot Locker, getting the J's, and, and all of that stuff. So uh, just going back, just helping my grandma to get uh, get on her feet. With you being married married at the time, uh, versus let's say other players coming in with you who weren't married, did you see spending habits differ? Absolutely. How bad was it for those who were just single bachelors out there? Just yeah, it, it was it was pretty it was vicious. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it was vicious. Uh, it, it, it's to the point where you got, especially the young single guys that's coming to lead, uh, making a lot of bread. Uh, they, they go year to year. You know what I mean, as far as if you got a guy that's making four a year, he'll he, he'll run through all that, and you you can you'll know the guys that that that's going broke because they're ready for the season to pop back up. You know, bro? I can't I can't wait to training camp. I can't wait for this because guess what? Yes, yeah, that every two two weeks check hey, that do that do some good. You know what I mean? So. That's crazy. You in the NFL living check to check. That's just wild. But you get you get a habit that is, is really hard to break, especially um, getting contact after contact. Um, you know what I mean? Um, most guys lower their head. And if you get the frontal lobe, it's, it's more impulsive. If you're getting hit in the front, it's, it's impulsive shit. You know what I mean? If, if it's bruising all of this in front of your head, the habits become more easier because you can't think. You ain't thinking clearly. Oh, wow. And the concussions and all that, I, I, if I see that, I want that. You feel me? With cars too. If I like that car and it look good, I want that because all the guys, you, you get you get hit every. It's a car wreck every week. Yeah. So how can you think if you got all of this part of your front of your brain bloody and just? I mean, you can't see it bloody, but that's how you think. If if I see if I see a pretty girl and and I'm not thinking clearly and I got alcohol on my brain, then we ready. I mean, and, and that's that's the things that that I was very proactive with, uh, leaving the game and uh, and being proactive with my uh, treatment. Because uh, now you made me, because uh, you know a lot of players coming out of the league they're violent. Right, 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 right. Um, so, because that contributes to some of that, the trauma that they went through in the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, a, a little bit, but most of the trauma comes from you know what I mean the the practice collisions. Um, the, the guys that you get them, the dogs that can fight through the collisions and the, the, the concussions and all of that. 
And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things that you just have to, once again, go to the, the Nero doctors and all of that, the things, the things that the NFL provides you with. So I got to ask, I mean, we've seen just this year, I mean, we've seen some crazy catastrophic things on the field. We've seen two with the, with the concussion, him just dropped on the field. And right. everybody was like, oh, shit, like, we've seen it the week before. Right. So how often do you think that really happens to where the players really are going through it, but they just kind of want to get in the game and still be out there for their team and, and risk they? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it happens more often than uh, we think. Uh, you know I mean, now that I'm a spectator watching it from right. the outside, um, it happens a lot. You know I mean, um, at the time I had an injury, um, you yeah, know, back, back when I was playing or whatnot, I had it week three of the season, um, got nicked up, uh, got banged up. And, uh, you know what I mean, at the time it, I'm a sudden guy, I like to get up quick, you know what I mean, show you I'm good. You know what I mean, at the time I got up, done the same thing and just, I mean, I got flimsy, you know what I mean? Um, and, and only way that, that everything went off in the stadium, I couldn't hear nobody. Only way I got to the damn sideline was I saw yellow pants. The Green Bay, the Green Bay pants. So I'm like, shit, I go that way. So I just start walking off. The next thing I know, I collapsed. I didn't know what the hell happened. I just, I was just in the locker room. Next minute, and um, it got to week nine of that same shit tour went through, where they let him play. They thought it was another injury. Went week nine, and uh, I, I got paralyzed for. I was paralyzed for three weeks. Lumped over. Yeah. So let's touch on that. And uh, well, right before we get to that. How do you feel the, the NFL does with the concussion protocol as far as keeping players out, making sure they're good to go back in? Right, going right, right. How, how would you grade them as far as how they... I, I think, I think, I think uh, they, do, they do their job as far as, you know what I mean, checking the players, uh, taking them to the blue tent, doing the evaluation. It's just to players to the extent where they know the game and they know how to get out the concussion protocol and know how to, you know what I mean, do the test. I mean, you do the test, you know what I mean, they take you through the test in the offseason. This is what comes on a concussion test. This is what does that. So the guys are not, you know what I mean, especially if you're getting paid that much and they're telling you uh, next week you may not get a check because of this and that, guys are going to check out and, you know what I mean, and, and figure out how to get out the concussion protocol. And, and, that's, and that's just where the game's at. Now, um, what is your mind state when you see that you're facing paralysis? And you're, oh, you're, you're kind of in an unknown state of how long this might last. Yeah. Um, once again, that, that's a pro. That's a proactive thing. You know what I mean, if you leave, if you leave the National Football League, um, uh, not being um, on top of your game as far as um, going to the doctors um, and, and they putting all of these uh, these people and these doctors in front of your face, you got to take advantage of that because it's, it's not for no reason. You know what I mean, they give me this insurance to do this. I think guys don't. After the game, guys get so caught up in themselves and doing so many other things that. They don't focus on the fine details that the, the National Football League is, is giving us for a, a playbook to do this. I do that. And um, yeah, I took, I took full advantage of it. I took probably two years of time out um, after I retired to, you know what I mean, gather myself to be, uh, you know what I mean, an everyday person. I mean, and that's, that's what guys, I, I think, that's what guys don't do, yeah, in my opinion. Because similar to uh, DeMar Hamlin just had a situation where he pretty much died on the field and they actually stopped. Absolutely. Game. You had a, a pretty traumatic injury where you got hit and was paralyzed on the field. Um, when, when you see them stop the game, do you agree with that decision? Or is it because, you know, there's some people like Skip that was like, why is the game not going on? And it seems uh, very see, For y'all, you know, yeah. is it like a show must go on thing? Like, so he's, a, he's a spectator. He's a guy that has to go behind the scenes and talk about it. You know what I mean? So I can't take his opinion and his, uh, I mean, his thought too far. But uh, other than them, uh, them, them guys counseling the game and postponing the game, I think that's the, that's the right move. You know what I mean, you got a guy here that, that literally died on the field. I mean, really risked his life. We, like I said, we say that when we go in the locker room, we say we'll die for this game, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, when you fall, you're like, man, look her. Man, get me off this field. That's the first thing I said when I got paralyzed. I was like, please. I, told, I was like, Lord, if you get me off this field, I'll never do nothing ever again. I mean, it was just, it was just, <laughs> it, it was just one of those things. Please get me up. So what does the NFL do for players that go through that? Like, did, did they Good hold question. down the medical bills? Did they? Nah, uh, so for myself, over the, over the time I was in the lead, um, I went through uh, year one, and I was like, uh, yeah, I'm getting my, getting my feet wet. I'm playing all right. Year two, I started playing a little reckless. 
Year three, we got real reckless plan uh, where, you know what I mean, getting the ball, trying to find, you know what I mean, getting yards after the catch. And so me and my agent had sat down and, uh, you know what I mean, started doing our homework. I was like, man, I need to sign a disability policy. I don't give a fuck what is on. It could be my, my fingers, my ears, uh, my toes, uh, uh, of course, my knee. And so happened at the end, I was like, dog, in my neck. And so, and so at the time, at the time, um, it was four years, four years advanced before I did that. Then, then my seventh year, I was like, give me my neck one more time, because I was playing at a whole high. I, you had to, you had to sign. So the the policy at the time was a couple a, a couple K to sign for a couple million. So it was it was it was some chunk, it was some change. And uh, every year you it, it, it had to renew over and over and over. And so I got to my my six, sixth year, where it was my contract year, where I was going to go get some bread, and uh, my agent's like, let's, "Let's go to the top with it. Let's go get a let's go get a good policy because you playing like not not a, a typical uh, tight end right now." And so we signed a ten million dollar policy at the time, and um, and so happened eight uh, week eight, my my ass got uh, my ass got paralyzed, uh, and uh, and it was with Lords of London. That was the insurance company. Yeah, Lords of London, uh, definitely out of. Over there, they, they definitely pay out well. Um, but, but let's walk through that because that's a scary thing to um uh to realize that I can't I can't move my toe. I don't feel right. my toes off. Walk us through whether whatever play it was and just kind of what was going through your mind right. as that immediately happened. It, it, it was routine. It was uh see, I can remember like it was yesterday. It was it was routine. It was uh, fourth quarter at the time. We were supposed to be out the game. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you. Probably next day I was probably gonna get a hundred million dollars. I was about to sign a contract, at least 70. And so uh, probably next, next day, that's how shit was working. And, and at the time, uh, nah, it was routine, fourth quarter, playing against Cleveland Browns, was whooping that ass. And uh, I'm like, why the hell are we still in the game? And then 12 threw me a routine ass slant. And so my ass, I'm trying to get yards at the catch. They told me to slide. I was like, I don't know shit about sliding. They give me the ball, I'm getting work, you feel me? And I uh, did that. And uh, next thing I know, I, I ducked my head. Ne man, next thing I know, I was looking at the sky, no. And uh, at the time, I was like, I was talking to myself. I was like, damn, it's me now, because I always seen guys do that on the field. You've seen it multiple times. I was like, fuck, I'm glad that ain't me. You know what I mean? So happened, I got to my seven year, bro. That, that was me on the ground just. And, I, and I, at the time, I was just like, shit, give me. And at the time, it was like, damn, there are 100 bees stinging me at the time. It's like, it's like a, that's the feeling. You get ASAP. It's like you're going straight to, I mean, you're going straight numb, ASAP. What are you trying to lift? You trying to lift your hand, your, your hand, your neck, your toes? You uh, at the time, I was, I was just, man, I was, at the time, I, I started praying instantly, man. And uh, I was like, <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. I was like, man, please get me off this ground. And, uh, and I was like, please, okay, this is what you do right now. You try to move your arm. Next thing I know, I was like, that thing ain't moving. So my legs was down. I was like, I right, try to spread your legs. I was like, I was like, Corliss, man. At the time, his name was Corliss. I was like, man, tell these people to come get me out this field. I can't fucking move. And next thing I know, I just, I passed out. Cause that's what the first thing you do when pain, when pain tolerance get too far, you just go, you go to sleep. And that's the first thing. That's the first thing I did, man. Yes. Thank God you made it out of that. What did Granny say? Oh uh, yeah, Granny Dan. She was on the first flight smoking. She was in the hospital before I was. <laughs> And uh, dead serious. And uh, yeah, that was, a, I, I, I never hear that down a day. She said, boy, I told you. And, uh, and, and that was the first thing she told me when I picked basketball over football is that it's, it's a vicious game. And uh, I know that yeah, no, nobody really make it out if you really think about it. You get, you get the guys at the 17, the quarterbacks like Tom Brady, but if you play in a real, real live position, yeah. it's 99.9% .9 you're gonna get injured. It's just, it's just when you're gonna get injured. So, so how do you, now that, like you said, you got a son that plays, right? Football. Yeah. So do you ever look, I mean, how do you, what game do you pass down to him? Does it scare you that he's going into the same kind of league you were? Yeah, I do. Uh, but he's so ate up and sold to the game. Not, not sold, but he's so ate up with it that, you know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? I try to groom him as much as possible. I say, get yours and get out. You know what I mean? And, and at the time, I'm raising him different. You know what I mean? He's, he's raised with a little money. He's raised with. You know what I mean? Knowing a couple people here and there. Um, at the time, I was raised with just football. You know what I mean, if, if he gets to college, football's not working, and you know what I mean? He's getting nicked up here and there. Of course, I'll pull him back. 
Uh, but, but like I said, he's living a totally different life than I did. And uh, I respect it, but yeah, it's, just, it's different. Now, now I got to ask you this, because I'm a Cowboys fan. We from Dallas. Did Dez catch the ball, man? Keep it away. Did Dak catch the ball? Yeah, I mean, Dez, Dez catch the ball? Did he catch it? Uh, <laughs> at the you time. All ass at you can yeah, you was. You was. <laughs> yeah, hey, that, hey, oh, and, oh, and, and that. Was that you that caught that ball? Uh, uh, that was Cook. Okay, that was Cook. Okay. Yeah, Cook, at, Cook. At, the, at the time, it, it, was, it, it was a catch because it, it was, um, I mean, ball, ball cause, cause a, it couldn't cause a fumble. So, you know what I mean? I, 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 I tell him that today. Why, why do the quarterbacks always be acting like, uh, you know how like the quarterbacks. You got to be, you got to. You got to be an actor. That's not. That's the number one thing in the National Football League. You got to be a ball player and an actor. <laughs> now, now, now um, and then I were I actually worked this because I used to be a beer vendor at the Cowboys. Y'all won a damn championship at the Cowboys Stadium. Yep. <laughs> against, the, against the Steelers. How did that feel, bro? That was awesome because it was it was back in my home state, <laughs> um, and and it was kind of like a Green Bay feel because it was it was like low key snowing. And the roads are slick. Was, the wow. Texas people didn't know how to drive. Nah, Wrecks the, everywhere. Yeah, the, the, the seat debacles. <laughs> hey, it was, hey, so it, it, was, it was right in our alley. And, uh, yeah, it came here and, and we got some work done. <laughs> how does it feel to win a Super Bowl? Yeah. No, it's, it's different. Um, it, it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, it's one of those things that it's hard, it's hard to get to the Super Bowl. I mean, you got 32 teams with 53 guys that is legit, the best in the world. And uh, getting to the Super Bowl is uh, – it's, it's really tough. Do y'all have a parade in Green Bay? Hey, we had a parade. Hey, okay. I know. Hey, did y'all celebrate in Green Bay? Hey, hey, on the real, on the real, that's nothing to them. That's, they shirt off in that weather. Shirt off. They 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 shirt off. <laughs> uh, so that year, I had got I got nicked up um, late thirteenth the thirteenth week uh, of the season. So we got there, and uh, man, like I said, I played so reckless, bro. I, I was getting nicked up often, like like real talk. Now I do gotta ask this question: Aaron Rodgers, you know, the the media always drives us nuts, right? And I always wonder. <laughs> they do that just they just him and Tom Brady. It's like a couple uh -oh. people that they why had why do you feel like y'all didn't win more Super Bowls? Because it feels like you know when you just look at his game, he looks like if not one or the top two quarterback absolutely. In the league. So I always wonder, like, how did he not, you know, win more Super Bowls? Because y'all That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, especially at the time that I was playing, we had – you had six guys you can throw the ball to. Man, and, and, run the, and run the Cobb was the, the low – on the low uh, – on the podium. Yeah, he, he was nice at the time. It was just that, that aura, bro, that, you know what I mean? You got to be able to connect with your players. You got to be able to dial, dial your guys in um, and, and, and get them sold to what – to what you're about, you know what I mean? Um, off the field and on the field, you know what I mean? You got to adapt. You got to be able to get with the culture too because most of his guys was, um, let's be real, African-American guys, and he had Jordy Nelson that he connected to very well, but you know, Jordy was really nice. And uh, it, 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 was just, it was just a dynamic that, you know what I mean, I think he couldn't grasp too. Let's, let's stay on Aaron for a little bit. <laughs> let's do it like this. Uh, Aaron started the league, I think one of the first, you know, he took over Brett Favre. We, first of all, we no, know. He played the Cowboys. Yeah. That was his first game. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was his first game. Mm -hmm. Cowboys mm -hmm. up. So, yeah, were you a fan of, like, the Packers, uh, Brett Favre, and then, of course, Aaron Rodgers coming in to, like, take over what the Packers was about to do next? Were you a fan of, like, just the team? Yeah, I was because uh, if, if you go, go back and read on the history of the, the Green Bay Packers, they do, it, they do it one way and one way only, and they stick with it. And uh, as you've seen, the only the, – the, the quarterbacks they had in the last, what, 20 years? Well, 30 years? Right. Brent Favre, Aaron Rodgers. And so they, they only going to go get the ones that, you know what I mean, fit with the Green Bay way. You know what I mean? And the Green Bay way, it works. You know what I mean? It, it, it works at, at, you know what I mean, at a certain point until, like this week, we met, you got a team that, that's some dogs, Detroit Lions. They ran the ball, put it in their face. And uh, I think that's where we got to get more culture at. That's where the Packers got to get more uh, you know what I mean? They got to go out in the offseason and the free agencies and, and go pay the money. But at the end of the day, you got a guy like Aaron Rodgers getting $200 million, and he's the franchise. So you can't, you can't spend and go get the core that he needs, like the, the, the Hopkins and the receivers that he really needs. Not the cops, not the buddy-buddy deals. <laughs> 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 
Now, keep it real, because I remember um, Des Bryant had a complaint about Romo. Felt like, you know, him and uh, uh, Witten was drawing up plays type shit to, you know, like kind yep. of boosting his numbers. Did you ever feel like that? You know, like, damn, like, they got some going on him and Jordy. Like, damn, why he get out there? <laughs> you know, because as a receiver, you're going to feel like, nigga, throw to me. I'm trying to get my stuff. Yeah, and, and I was that type of guy. Like, I'm the guy, you, you, get, out, you get out the huddle, I'm like, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little pat. Look at me, please. And uh, but at the time, man, it was so many. The ball was going so many places. And uh, like I said, we was the best best receiving crew on turf for six years. Let's just be real. And uh, it was just it was just hard to get the ball all the way around. Was there any other quarterback you wish you could have played for as you were going into the league? Um, Absolutely. As I was going into the league. Yeah, as you were going into the league. Of course, of course, you want to play with Tom Brady. I mean, he's one of those guys where. You can adapt to that guy. You can get close to that guy on and off the field. And uh, and just seeing him from afar, never met him or nothing like that, but just seeing how he moves and, you know what I mean, how his, his lingo and the things he do, that, that's a guy that, you know what I mean, you can play for. And you can give your body up for it too also. There you go. Any other quarterbacks that you just was kind of like? Not really. Let's go and nip that in the butt. <laughs> hey, let's keep, let's keep it a bean, right? We, you know, we got Dez Bryant. You know, I love black people. I'm a pro-black man. But it just seems like the black quarterbacks don't never be accurate, bro. Never be active? Ac accurate. With the oh, accurate, yes. He's like, always got that match. <laughs> like, who, like, like, honestly, like, who would you say is the best black quarterback playing right now? Wow. Best black quarterback. I, I, think, I think the reason why, I'm just going to go give it to your buck, too. I think you, you, get, you, get, you get the other quarterbacks that's the, the iconic, the... the the, the, the Caucasians, the white boys, yeah. and they, they critique their games in the off season. They don't have the chains, they don't have the bling and all the extra, you know what I mean? That, that's just, yeah, that's, that's, that's to be real. Yeah. And you got, you got the other, the, on the other hand, you got these, uh, the, the, what's the guy from Jackson, Jacksonville? Uh, uh, long hair. I don't know. I don't know his name. You got you got guys like that. That's icon of quarterbacks. The guys in leads, and you got Lamar Jackson with the bling and all that, and off season coming in. And it's all about detailing and working on your craft in the off season. And I just think us as you know what I mean, as African Americans, I was addicted to the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. I work 365. But when you get a quarterback that's getting the quarterback cheese and the quarterback money and the quarterback fame. African Americans, I don't think we we dissect it like we should. I'm just giving it to your buck. Do you feel like it, athletes are getting more and more like looking like hip hop artists and rappers yes. too much? And and, and careers are uh, are going short, are getting shorter and shorter because you got guys hustling off the field. Back back in back in the guy, it was just strictly on the field. Let's work your craft. Let's see how good you can get. Let's see, let's see good on good, best on best. But now it's seeing who can make the most money off the field. Right. You know I mean, yeah, I think it started with Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch was getting paid more than off the field than on the field. Brand. He was a whole just he brand. was a whole brand. He was a whole brand. And so you get you get that. And so, you know what I mean, you start you start forgetting what really got you here. And that and that was playing on, on this on the gridiron. Yeah, so do you think it's because I even look at it like the rap game, do you think that we're just looking at more like a hustle than actually putting our passion into it? Wow. I, I really, I really do, and that's why I was gonna go with the next. I think us as brothers and us as, I mean, uh, the, the culture we was raised in, most of us was raised in. We look at it as a hustle, a come up, the next come up, the next check. When we getting this, when we getting that, but when, when it was all like, if you finish, you are gonna get what you want. If right. you do the right, the next right thing, that's what I call it. Right. If we go out and do the next right thing, you are gonna get all you want, because obviously you here in the National Football League, you only got what two hundred. But 300 guys that's getting in the dough on that on the signing day, so I think it's all about doing the next right thing. And guys, the guys forget that. That's real. And I know you say you don't watch movies, but I really, I really don't. There's a movie called Any Given Sunday. I watched that, bro. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Has he seen something? <laughs> all right, so I'll say it like this, man. Any Given Sunday kind of showed you how uh, off the field situations could affect on the field situations, as far as let's say even a quarterback, wide receiver. Yep, yep, like that. yep, that's real. Did you, for you in uh, 12, was that a situation <laughs> as far as off the field would affect on the field? Did y'all kick it off the field to like say, hey, give me more passes or did, 
Then he like, you know how like y'all might just work yeah. out together. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we really didn't have that relationship. It, it's it's out, so it ain't nothing to be hidden or nothing to be you know, I mean under the rug. But we really we really didn't have that relationship. Uh, once once practice was over, once uh, the film is over, once that is over, me and Twelve went our opposite ways. It wasn't like let's go to dinner here, let's go do this here. When we touched the grass or when we touched the film room and got in the nitty gritty of things, that that's when things happen. We we really try to uh, try early on to make something yeah work yeah we did. We did uh, over the time. We did uh, actually in, in, the, in the end of my career. We tried McCarthy tried to put us together. It was like, uh, here you two motherfuckers need to. We need to figure. We, we need to. We need to figure this out. So uh, on on Saturday nights we, we'll get in there and uh, me and him being there just talking about nothing. It wasn't nothing about football. It was strictly family. How are your family? How's your family? How are you doing in life? So it's strictly just getting that that bond and uh, and then uh, you get the bond off the field. It automatically clicks. If you thought if it's seven steps here and you're trying to get the ball to me, it just automatically clicks. The chemistry does. Now earlier we you, we were talking about what makes a team, and I feel like you answered perfect because you know when there's no cohesion, yes, like because we're supposed to you we want to feel like everybody here is my brother. So for our family, we're gonna protect each other. We're gonna play well. We're gonna we're gonna make sure we're gonna pull the best game out of each other. But when we're divided or we don't have a real relationship. Like we can't get our best out the game. So how do you? How is wow. it that you create those relationships so we can get the best out of each other? I felt I felt like that my whole career actually um, uh, dealing with Aaron Rodgers. No, um, I, I was that guy uh, once again coming from. I was pure. You know what I mean, it ain't it ain't it ain't shit. I'm trying to hide. It ain't shit. I'm trying to do sneaky. It ain't it ain't no finagling or nothing. It's like I'm me. You know what I mean? Um, I mean when I walked in, it was straight business. I was like, you throw me the ball, I'm gonna do my best to catch it. You feel me? Uh, and, and I don't think we ever grasp that uh, that relationship. And I think that hinders relationships on the field. As far as like, I, I need you to go seven steps, and then I'm looking at you like I ain't going, I ain't going nothing. You know what I mean? Because that chemistry was off. You know what I mean, I'm looking at him hostile. You know what I mean, and I go through some of my career in the National Football League. I'm like, damn, I ain't even like seize. I ain't even like grasp and like take advantage and like and love on it like I should have, you know what I mean? I took every day for granted, and I was like, shit, I'll be here the next day, I'll be here next Tuesday, I'll be here next Tuesday, next thing I know, I'm, I'm paralyzed, and didn't, really, and didn't really love on a game, the game that I, I worked for so much, because I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, Aaron Rodgers like, man, I really want to hit you, bro. <laughs> but I can't, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're the professor. <laughs> like, like I, I'm losing ASAP. As, like, so I had to do that. I had to do that my whole career. Like, man, I really want to hit you so bad, bro. And, and, um, and it was just one of those things. And I think, I think with all the stress and all the stuff on it, it uh, yeah, I think that that helped that helped shorten my career too. Yeah, it comes from an honest place, man. For real, that comes from an honest place. Um, let's talk about your position, uh, the tight end position. First of all, what what was your uh, Madden rating? Were you, you know, nah, eighty nine. Eighty nine. Come on, bro. Quit playing with me. Talk, talk so, to play. We, come on now. Yeah, we go. We go yeah, to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Every play. So man, you were, um, you were what, like stats wise, considered like the greatest tight end possibly, or is the greatest tight end for the Packers. Um, is yeah, not even possible. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm I'm yeah. looking through you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm waiting for you to get right. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to get right. I, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm waiting for you. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> that, that was motivation for the other upcoming tight ends. I, I, man, I'm looking straight through yeah. you, bro. Man, for, for for that for that position, um, when you look at the greats and for you to do what you've done with the Green Bay Packers, um, when it comes to legacy, uh, you know, even with your son and kind of going forward, um, how does that feel to be, you know, top dog? Like where people, as of right now, are gunning for, yeah. you know, hopefully your position and your stats. Uh, it, it, it's neat, man. It's uh, it's very different. Um, and, and for my and for my little my little kid, it just it holds a. Uh, you get that podium up here, and he's got to reach it. You know what I mean? It's either you reach it or not. And that that's how I hold him. You know what I mean? I treat him like a kid, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean, uh, hey, pops pops done something. And uh, we train like it, we eat like it, we sleep like it, and everything we do, we uh, hey, it's it's winning mentality. And uh, and that that's that's with all my kids, man. And uh, that's why, hey, the pipeline, I, I built that pipeline for a reason.
So what are your thoughts on Jason Witten as a tight end? <laughs> That's on, good. Let's go. I I I, I got to give him something though. He done 14, 15 years. He, he, he retired. He done really he well. Went back to play again. I got to give it to him first before I get him. He done really well. Slid, caught the ball, got his yak. I mean, well, got his yards, not yak, and uh, done his thing. But he just didn't, man. He played a game like he was just playing for another day. <laughs> man, he get the ball. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing to it. He get the ball fall, but. That's the game, though. Now, come on, now. He had that's what. Kind, but, kind of play where his helmet came off. Yeah. He still he kept trucking no helmet. Hey, then I tell you, you got to be a ball player and an actor. <laughs> that that that's what that is. And, and once again, Jason Witten is all, one of the all times best. Yeah. And so he he did his thing. He played and he at the time and uh, at the time the the game was getting uh, really, you know, what I mean, uh, to up tempo level. He played the game right. He started going out of bounds, sliding, and not taking the unnecessary hits. So. I really respect him for that, though. There you go. And I have to ask, um, just your thoughts on uh, Aaron Hernandez. And when I ask you that, uh, to <laughs> where you have a chance at NFL, you're playing for, uh, you're playing for Tom Brady. Yeah. And um, sliding, yeah, yeah, sliding and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, wow. And he's not sliding on the field. He's not sliding on the field. He. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what he said? <laughs> what he said? <laughs> 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 Hey. What what are your thoughts when you see someone with an opportunity like what he has, and then you see something like that in his? You know, he ended up taking his own life. Um, in regards, right to where you know his story, you know, playing out on Netflix and everything. To where yeah, yeah, I think I think that the situation he went through, um, all of that, I think is very tough. Um, doing what he was doing and playing in the football game and doing all that is, man, that's 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 very tough to do, right? Because yeah, play, play, that's yeah because. I, I ain't playing play, 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 play national football and doing what he's doing. That's playing football is already tough. See you know what I mean? And then you got that on your head doing all this. That's, that's, that's man, that's, that's hard. Do you blame a lot on that because they talked about concussion yeah. that caused a lot of that. Ooh. And you mentioned something earlier where you're kind of acting, <laughs> acting on impulse. Impulse. Uh, it, could, it, could, it could. You got a view out, hanging out, um, very hostile environment. You got liquor on your brain. And your brain's already bruised. I mean, um, it it could do a part in it. Has anybody ever tried you? Just out, out No, no, I don't. I don't move like that, man. Yeah. I'm, I move real uh, professional. Um, I hang with good people, uh, quality people, and uh, that's just that's just how I roll. So I, I never get in flack. Yeah, yeah. If you find me in flack, man, I was looking for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I gotta ask you about. Um, at one point in time, you had Colin Kaepernick with the Nillian situation, right? You weren't in the league, but from a player standpoint, was that a distraction? Was it real? Was it something that you would have jumped behind? Like, because, you know, at one point, I know it had been a lot of pressure on all the black players to either make, you know, stand with it or, or nil. Yeah. Um, it was a situation where you got you to gotta pick, once again, personal or business. And it ain't nothing about no race or nothing like that. It's either like you want you want to get paid, that's what we're here for, or you want to play around with these people. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I, when you put it like that. Because <laughs> you say, do you want to get paid or do you want to play around with these people? Well, I want to get paid. You heard what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got you got to pick one. You know what I mean? You want to pick, uh, go back to the, the gutter where you're from and, and, and be like them people out there? Or you want to pick over here and go get, you know I mean, it's, it's the, the money, the quality of life, set your family up for life. Or, or hinder a, a, a check over here. Do you think he just got in too deep and he just had to stand on it? Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's that was the, the end result of that. I think he just got way too deep in the situation and he had to he had to go with it. Now, being a regular guy, how, how was that transition to you know NFL superstar to? <laughs> I mean, we, we ain't shitting on the six five. We ain't shitting on the six five. But I mean, you know, maybe you're not getting recognized as much as you used to. Yeah, you have to be a Oh no. We didn't say that. Oh, <laughs> 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 this dude, this dude's funny. <laughs> How, talk about that transition, like just being regular, like going yeah, yeah. the game and watching. It, it's, it's different uh, because once you, you go places, you go here, you go there. Uh, you know I mean, you get you get recognized, especially you know I mean in, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where it's very tight. 
it ain't no clubs, it ain't the big city, it ain't the, it ain't the you know what I mean, the buildings. It's all about football. And, uh, and now when you go play, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't mind. I like it. I'm very low-key as it is. Um, it don't bother me at all. Um, of course, I have to adapt to not going to practice every day or not doing all that. But being a regular person, I'm already low-key and chill. Um, so it, it really didn't hinder anything I had going. So what do you do instead of practice? Like, how do you, you know, you want to stay fit. You want to stay in some kind of shape. So what I do now? The routine. Oh, okay. Are you saying I look good? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Like I look better, but. <laughs> No, no, um, now, man, um, like I said, I got, I got, I got boys um, that I deal with now um, that keeps me, you know what I mean, motivated, keep me moving to, you know what I mean, high levels. Um, like I said, I'm going to coach, I'm going to school now to go to go coach, and uh, I keep active in the community and with the, you know what I mean, with the youth, and uh, man, they keep me, uh, they keep me moving, they keep me active and keep me, um, you know what I mean, mobile. Are you in touch with other act or? <laughs> retired NFL players, like do y'all, like do y'all link up? You know, like you know, give each other holidays or whatever. Yeah, um, you used to now. Now, now my kids getting older. Once again, I, I can't, I can't move like that. You know what I mean, I'm a, you know I mean, I, I move, I move very different. You know what I mean, I, 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 I take her. Uh, yeah, uh, very true. Uh, and and I move very different. And uh, I mean, I got, I do got one buddy that I do connect with, and that's Jamal Charles. And uh, we we do pretty much similar things as far as um, he, he deal with his kids. He he got a family. He got you know I mean the the quality of, the quality of life. And so uh, when I pick when I pick a, a friend, I, they got to be similar to what I'm doing in life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We can't be you know what I mean going to the moon and back, but uh, we can go halfway there. <laughs> so tell us how you got into coaching and dealing with the youth. What? How did, tell us about a little bit about that. Uh, just my life, and that's how I grew up. Uh, I I just knew. Um, I, I never had, I never had a, I mean, a professional athlete come to my, my, my hood or my, uh, my, the streets where I live at, uh, you know what I mean, throwing the ball or even getting behind the rope, holding the rope or setting up the cones. You know what I mean, um, so uh, now when I give back, you know what I mean, it's a, it's a give back. If you come there and you ain't got the, you know what I mean, the finances to pay me or whatnot, man, jump in the drill. You know what I mean, you are, you already here. You don't drove here for what? For nothing. And uh, what's that? Oh yeah, and um, like like I said, I, I like um, I got a company now uh, in Elevate You where you know what I mean, um, I elevate kids um, to the highest level uh, and try to get them to to the to per perfection as quick as possible. Um, if they're in high school, I try to get them to college quick as possible. And at college, I try to show them the NFL before they even get there. So uh, the 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 you know what I mean the business that I'm uh, forming now. Try to move it around the world and get and get these kids. Uh, I mean, up to tempo, up to speed, uh, as quick as possible. So that sounds like the same thing, uh, Deion Sanders. Absolutely. With Jackson State. Yep. Uh, what are your thoughts when you see uh, him coming to Jackson State for the two years that he did and provided him what they provided him for the three years? I'm sorry for what he did, uh, and then of course choose to go over to Colorado uh, University, uh, University of Colorado. I think I think it was it was uh it was very smart. Uh, I think I think Holly I think Holly or Dion uh and, and what what he's doing with these kids and uh and what he's doing with um, organizations and programs around the world I think is different uh, because he's tapping into you know what I mean showing these kids what it takes to get there for one behind the scenes um, and, and he's treating every situation like the NFL or uh, like the hard you know what I mean to to get to get to what these kids want and. Uh, I think Dion's he's doing it. He's doing a great day. Do you think it'll ever be a day where HBCUs will be looked at as top tier for the recruiting classes like yourself growing up coming out of college? Yeah, I think Dion. I think Dion leaving HBCU. I think it kind of like messed it up low key because of he he was the face. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, he he was the face of it. But at the end of the day, like, like we talk about, you either get elevated or you get eliminated. Mm -hmm. And at the time. Dion got elevated and he went to the high level. Or he could have been losing, and guess what the people would have said? It's time to get him out of here. So I got to get your thoughts then on, uh, we just had TCU versus Georgia State, where TCU was, you know, they finally got to the big stage, national championship, fighting for it for years. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, they played already, but to get there, and then you see a 7 to 65 or 65 to 7 blowout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does it make you change your idea as far as when they let, you know, like lesser, uh, you know, not even HBCUs yet, but 
lesser teams that's not in the Pac-12 and things like that. Yeah, it, it, it does. It does. When, when you go from when you go from you got TCU over here, you got Fort Worth, and you go to Georgia, where, where they, they, you know what I mean? You got Mississippi losing, you got the swamp. Yeah. You feel me? These kids built different. Man. Let's just be real. And uh, and the lights was on. It yeah. was it was a high it was a hostile environment. I'm taking I'm, I'm taking Georgia I'm taking Georgia all day. Oh, so you were taking Georgia all day. You knew it was gonna be that Facts. They made for this. Facts. It got that that first two touchdowns. I I just knew it was in the bag. And, and and it was just it's just that the mentality. And if you go to the National Football League, NFL love the Georgias, the Mississippi States, the uh, LSU, uh, now Texas A and M because they're the SEC. Yeah. And so they love them teams. And you come down here to TCU, they don't like touching them for some reason. I don't know what it is, but you go to you go to the big schools, NFL love them. Get the fours and fives there. Get the fours and fives there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Uh, so now that you're, of course, just a, you know, you watch Sunday night. I mean, Sunday night football. Like everybody else, um, Cowboys. <laughs> First, are Cowboys America's team? Yeah, I, I was raised a Cowboy fan. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see where yeah. we stand. First. Let's see where yeah. we stand. First. <laughs> All right, so the Cowboys, man. I, I want your thoughts as far as just on the Cowboys organization, man. Jerry Jones, of course, the '90s was the '90s. Uh, and now Jerry Jones is still there trying to pull this thing out. First with Romo, now with Dak. Uh, Dak back from injury, lights out. He's been playing lately, but then they never seem to live up to the big stage of the Super Bowl. Uh, what are your thoughts just on the Cowboys stigma as America's team in the Super Bowl? I, I, I do, I do think that 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 do need to lead the team as far as America team because you know what I mean America's team has got to win now. <laughs> yeah. So, but at the end of the day, uh, you know what I mean, they, they they do revenue a lot. I mean, Jerry Jones is the he's the face, he's the man uh, behind uh, all the madness. But uh, I do think they got a problem. Uh, uh, they they can win a Super Bowl if they can get it together. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, uh, yeah, they need to take that label off that. Just you, just on the outside looking in. What is up with Dak? Like, like it's moments. Where I think I think it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot being. It's a lot being the the, the Americans team. It's a lot being the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. It, it, it's, it's a lot, man. And and at the end of the day, I got to look out for the player because you never know what the player is going through yeah. mentally. Right. And I, I can't I'm, – I'm a Dak. I like Dak. Yeah, me too. He, he, he's, he's a gamer. You can't find a quarterback that can throw two picks and then come throw three tutties yeah. mentally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and, 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 he, and he does that. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm a big Dak fan. I'm a big Dak fan, period. For when you see him break his leg, I mean, break his, uh, his ankle. And you see, like, from you even come back from injury, you see a player like a quarterback who breaks his ankle. What kind of mental toughness does it take to still go out there and <laughs> run like you do, but yet, like, a season ago, a couple of seasons ago, you, your, leg, your ankle just dangling off your foot? I, it's, it's, it's more a mental state of mind. Uh, you you got to be somewhat built for it. You got to be uh, made for it uh, me mentally. Uh, and I know a, a lot of mental stuff went on with Dak and a lot of mental stuff, you know what I mean, went through his head. But at the end of the day, he, hey, the kid is a game player. He's, he's a ball player, I mean, and uh, he, he can, that, that's his position, and I think this is his team. And I think Dak can take them guys to the Super Bowl, though. I do. Uh, I wanted to touch back uh, just a little bit about um, you dealing with the youth. Um, now, I know you see, you, you get a lot of troubled youth that come, and you know, you try to pour into them and mentor them. How hard is it to, you know, build that relationship with kids, you know, and trying to put them on a the path when you see them kind of going the opposite direction? Um, I, my thing, I just I try to show them the way I live and the, and the things I've been through. You know what I mean? It, it's a, I just try to show them guys there's another way to do this, another way to deal with this, another way to go about it. And, and after that, I, I let them them guys make the decision. If it's my kid, I force feed them with it. Right. You know what I mean? But, um, you know what I mean, kid, kids are going to be kids. At the end of the day, especially especially you got all the tags on your name, you got all American, you got all these offers. It's gonna come to them, period. And um, as far as you know, I hear a lot of coaches that they, they work with youth. They often say, you know, you become like the father figure if there's one that's absent in the home. Um, you know, to the point to where they might be spending the night at the house. Is that something you've come across yet, or that you had to, had to deal with? No, I don't, I, we don't do all that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do all that. Hey, hey, hey. All right, man. Uh, first taker undisputed. 
Is that what? First take with Skip. I mean, what? Uh, uh, what's that boy name? The Shannon Sharp in them or uh, Stephen A. Smith? I gotta go Shannon Sharp because because once you get into that that realm of life, you go that that Shannon Sharp shoot from the hip. I, I don't want nothing off the clipboard. Nothing. You gotta study for it. I just want you to get on set and let's go. So that's why yeah, that's why I go with that show. Do, do players respect the the commentators that haven't played? Absolutely game? not. <laughs> not not at all. Yeah, if you ain't been here or you ain't been through the if you ain't been through none of the things I have been through, like why why listen? What's the most you've seen one of the players on the team trick off on a woman? I I I would never I I would I would never in that realm of life. <laughs> <laughs> pull up aside like, bro, really? <laughs> nah, I, the, them, I, the, guy, the, the guy's done that. I'm running. Real talk. Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> now, I just got to ask you, how much money would you have to make to just put somebody up in a condo? Like, like old boy from uh, I I wasn't even in that realm of life. I'm saying, how much money would you have to make? Like, you got to be I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> 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 we got one more question, bro. <laughs> Said, um, uh, I just want to take uh, on. Uh, I think there's a movie coming out of 80 for Brady. Mm. Brady's playing at a, at a high level where he's in the playoffs at his age. What does that tell for you when you see the test of time for quarterback doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, at that high level, that means you're taking care of yourself, you, you're taking the game serious. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a big Brady fan. If I had to play with any other quarterback, I play with Brady, and, and 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 that's yeah. And I I would think any player in the realm of the football, NFL, Pop Warner, you want to play with a guy like that. I always thought it was like NFL is getting more easier on quarterbacks that you can't touch them. Don't pick. Don't Absolutely. Pick, don't touch them at all. Like you, I'm like it's like bro, you can play till you're 50 now. Like, yeah, yeah. You can't touch me. Like, yeah. Kind of Man, and that's where you want your kid to play. If you if you know what I mean. But my kid's gonna be six four, two fifty. He ain't gonna be a quarterback. You have a college one. No, yeah, it's open. Oh, there you go, there you go. Highest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> Highest bidder. So, um, as far as what you have coming up, man, you got some things coming up. I believe even Netflix might be even in the works. Yeah, we we working on that. Me and my dog Rodney working on that. Rodney Smith, uh, uh, work, working on big things. And uh, like I said, I train the kids. We elevate you. Got seven on seven team. We travel around the world and play. And uh, man, we got a lot of things that's popping off right now. There you go. There you go. My guys. Any words of motivation or encouragement you could give any young kids that's looking to get to your level of how you succeed in NFL? Absolutely. Any words of encouragement you give them? Yeah, man, you got to set a goal. That's, that's the first thing I did, um, especially um, as, a, as a kid. As a kid that didn't have nothing, um, I, I set a goal, and I stuck with it. Uh, it wasn't no finagling. It wasn't no um, going up and down. It was just straight through it, and, uh, and I had a mindset of, uh, you know what I mean, of being successful, not even popular, not even having money, just being successful and um, uh, doing what I was called to do. And, and that was, uh, you know I mean, giving back for one and uh, doing what I love. And uh, yeah. How can they tap into the Elevate You? Like, it, it, uh, yeah, any so, kid can get to it? Or? Yeah, any kid can get to it. Uh, it's on my social, um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, the Twitter. And uh, yeah, so it's an up tempo workout. 45 minutes, some of them don't make it, some of them do. We, we break that seal. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, and it's, uh, it's very up-tempo. And uh, it just teaches kids, once again, it teaches kids how to, you know what I mean, when mommy and daddy ain't around and you got coaches all over, and you're going to Texas and you got this coach that never break it because you done been through it. So it's, it's, it's one of those workouts. Men for a beast. Man, we just want to thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time, brother man. Awesome, brother man. You really, truly are a legend of it, and we appreciate you for stopping by. Wait, 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 wait. I know. All the social media, because you said that's how you get at it. Yeah. Yeah. All the, all the contacts. All the social media. Yeah, throw oh, it out yeah. there. Yeah. Hey, Jermichael Finley. It's at Jermichael Finley, everything. You got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all, yeah. It's my full name. Only one. Only one. one. Only one. Yeah, you ain't, if, you, if you find a Jermichael, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> My guys. Yeah. Hold on, wait. Oh, oh, this, you best, close that? Close this, that? this is the best part, brother. You are a real life street friend. Uh, hey. Shout out real
street stars, nigga. Mola. Hey.